Fine. Hello, everybody. It's nice to see you again. I'm Boaz Feiler. I'm an evolutionary astrologer. And this is the weekly astrological message for the week between the 1st and the 8th of July 2017. So, first of all, I want to thank you for all the comments uh, that you've given me on my last video. It's a pleasure making these videos for you and sharing the knowledge and listening to you as well. I see a lot of videos myself. This is a time, and we're going to talk about it this week, that we have to take our part, that we have to play our role uh, within our own lives in sharing knowledge and heightening the light. But before we go there, let's begin with the fact that July opens up with the Moon in Libra conjunct um, Jupiter. It's a great time to just enjoy life, to enjoy the company of people that we admire and love to be with, to enjoy good food, good drink, and basically enjoy yourself. There's a feeling of freedom with this Moon conjunct Jupiter. It's also a great time to broaden our horizons and to take part in any spiritual or ideologic activity that we uh, uh, can participate in, especially with people as well, not doing it alone or just doing it with the company of people that we love. Saying that, this is also the day that um, Chiron, the wounded healer of our celestial dome, stations to start its retrograde. It's going to continue until uh, December 4th, 2017. Now, um, strangely or very synchronously, all my clients during the last two weeks have this retrograde placed very strongly in their natal charts. Uh, this retrograde took place either on their sun, their natal sun, their north node, their natal Chiron, and people are feeling it. So first of all, let's talk about what is a retrograde. Well, any retrograde is a time in which we can have a different aspect. We could look at things differently. It's a time that we are allowed to see things from a different angle concerning the subjects that the planet, or in this case, the asteroid, signifies. Now, Chiron, as we know, is the wounded healer. It's the place in which we feel wounded ourselves. It's a place that we feel hurt in forever, or at least from a time that we were very young. It's a place that we feel weakened in, and it is also a place of great humility and wisdom. Why? Because this is a place that we need to acknowledge our limitations as mortals, as human beings, and the fact that we are not as strong or as perfect or as fixed as, as, as uh, they say in the Kabbalah, you know, because we're here in this lifetime, in every lifetime, to fix ourselves and to fix the world. So Chiron is a place that we need fixing in, that we need strengthening in, that we need evo evolution in. And even if it's not uh, due to anything that is up to us, or it's not, up, it's not because of our own faults or anything, it's still a place in which we are not as um, perfect as we want to think of ourselves to be. And understanding our own mortality there, and being brave enough to touch that pain, to touch that wound, brings both humility and wisdom. Humility and wisdom that we can later utilize to heal other people that are dealing with the same subjects that we have already so much experience in around us and be healers not only to ourselves but to them as well. So this, this Chiron retrograde is really an invitation to touch our own wounds and to heal, to truly leave, to let them, to let that um, pastoring wound uh, cleanse and take all the poison out of our blood and leave those hurtful places behind to really shed that uh, snakeskin off ourselves 
and to leave behind subjects and people that are no longer beneficial for us and our future. Chiron retrogrades and any Chiron transit is about leaving things behind. It's about taking away the clutter in our lives. It's about understanding that things and people and subjects that may have supported us in the past and provided comfort and sustenance dried up and that we need to move away from them and free some space and remain with less but less that is worth a lot more to us in our future. Sometimes we are asked to leave behind subjects that are valid and are useful for us in our future but we cannot take care of everything at the same time and even temporarily we need to move away from them just to take a slower pace that is healthier for us and more aligned with our true identity because this is what Chiron is all about. It's about understanding ourselves better and accepting all the parts of our personality, even the ones that we're not very proud of, even the ones that we are ashamed of, the ones that we feel are our weakest and most hurtful parts. So it's about um, loving, giving tender love and care to those parts within us and healing them. Healing them because they're the ones that need the most our love and our care. This is not the time to shy away from them. So if you want to uh, see if this Chiron retrograde will hit you stronger than it does other people, there's two factors that you need to take into consideration. A, is your life cluttered up with subjects and activities that take away from your um, energies and keep you from doing the things that are most important for you? Are you um, catering to too many subjects and, and people in your life that is, are not really beneficial for you and your future and are not giving you the emotional and spiritual sustenance that you need? Other than that, astrologically, look in your natal chart and see if you have planets between the 28th degree starting the, the, um, the retrograde movement in Pisces to the 24th degree of Pisces. And of course, opposing it, the 24th to the 28th degree of Virgo and squaring it, the 24th and the 28th degree, 24th to the 28th degree of Gemini and Sagittarius. If you do, you'll be feeling this retrograde movement that's going to last up to, up to December 4th more strongly. The 2nd of July is a sensitive day. It's, the moon is still in Libra and that's a wonderful moon, but it's T-squaring Mars and Pluto. And that opposition between Mars and Pluto is at its height. If you want, want to understand it more, go back to my previous video. I'm talking enough about that opposition over there and you'll be able to understand how it feels and what it does in our lives. But this moon is fueling it so we'll be able to feel it more acutely on the 2nd of July. So we need to be extra tolerant and flexible and loving and caring both with ourselves and other people in our lives. The 4th of July um, 4th of July. Well, happy birthday, America. <laughs> the 4th of July, um, Venus is going into Gemini. And all the Venusian uh, subjects are going to um, get a much faster pace. We're talking about love, relationships, income, and basically satisfaction within our lives. The good thing about that is that we're able to put some logic into those subjects really navigate through our life in a much faster pace. There's more intellect going into those subjects. The not so positive part about this Gemini influence is that being interested and having an intellectual um, stimulate is what Gemini is all about. So we we would like to know everything about everything. We could spread our energies too thin. And as easily as we can connect to new subjects and make new connections, and that's a good thing, 
the same way and in the same uh, fast pace we can discommunicate and move away from things when they start boring us, boring us and then they become passé and we move on to the next thing and we could move on too fast for our own good and not stay long enough in the same place to actually reap what it is uh, that we're seeding and spread our energy too thin on too many subjects and not really move ahead uh, on, on any of them and just you know skim the surface and be a little shallow but once we are aware of that we can utilize this energy to really get ahead in the subjects of relationships love and income and satisfaction in our life just utilize our brains a little more on the fifth Mars the planet of our male energy and initiative and action and all our desires is moving into the happy happy sign of Leo I'm very happy it's the first herald of a few planets that are going to move into Leo uh, during this month and make us all more uh, full of joie de vivre the joy of life and sunnier sunnier atmosphere but also more proud and vain and sure of ourselves and our messages so when the planet of action moves into Leo it brings a lot of bravery into our actions and it calls us to really participate on the stage of life in a full manner put our hearts on the stage wear our hearts on our sleeves and really take part believing that what we are doing is not only valid but is important this is and and this is even strengthened more by the fact that the that Vesta the asteroid in charge of everything that is sacred of the sacred fire in our lives the things that we feel are most important and we need to dedicate ourselves to is on the North Node it would be peaking on the 6th of July and both these aspects really call us to take part not to hesitate not to be afraid we are called to act upon everything that we feel is important and sacred in our lives to do our own part in progressing what it is that is important to us to heighten the light to believe in hope and to understand that our small actions are part of a greater scheme that we are part of uh, we are only small parts and you know in Hebrew there's a there's a beautiful song that says we are all a small light of a very immense one so this is what this is all about this is about not shying away not procrastinating anymore not fearing uh, our own shadows but really acting upon the things that we believe in and doing so in a very um, in a way that is full of humility in a way that is not too proud in a way that is not too egocentric in a way that is not too sure of itself and that is especially important because on the 6th of July we're going to have the square between the Sun and Jupiter at its height as well and that square is always a time that we need to be careful not to be too extravagant not to do things in a big way and to be more discreet to be more tactful than we usually are and just full of humility so as long as we are mindful of these things this could be an amazing time to play our part in this universe and we are called to do it as I said on the 7th of July we have the moon in Sagittarius where usually it's very optimistic but it's conjunct Saturn so we have to be careful not to be again too sure of ourselves to understand that other people and other ways of thought are valid but there's other ways of doing things as well that there's still things for us to learn and we need to be careful not to be too judgmental over ourselves and other people in our lives more tolerant more flexible 
The eighth is an energetic buildup to the full moon of the ninth. It's a full moon in Capricorn conjunct Pluto opposing Mars. It's not a very positive or, I mean, any moon could be positive or negative. But this one is very intense. It's not a very nice full moon. It could be very intense emotionally, even though it is in Capricorn. It could draw us to places of either anger or depression or just all these negative emotions that we can sometimes deal with. And it would be good to pack in our imaginary backpack towards the ninth uh, some extra um, sunny and bright and happy atmospheres and feelings and more tolerance and, and flexibility. And just be careful not to be too obsessive about things even if they don't go your way and make sure you're not getting into extra drama or uh, fights or arguments that are not necessary. Mm -hmm. Saying that this is a time to watch the limitations that you know you need to impose upon yourself and your life. This moon in Capricorn calls us to um, mature, to take responsibility over our own lives, especially in the realms of career and our public role in front of other people, and to understand that the own rules, regulations, and limitations that we place upon ourselves are the ones that are going to make us happier and enabling us to live our life freely. Mm -hmm. I always give that example to my clients because Saturn is all about understanding how to follow your own limitations and rules. It's like a man that has a very high blood sugar. And if he's not careful with the sugar intake that he takes each day, if he doesn't follow his, follow his own rules and regulations, he can become a diabetic. And once he does, no sugar anymore for this guy all through his life. But if he does keep his own rules and limitations, he'll be able to live freely and still have a little bit of sweetness in his life. But it's all about understanding just how much and when. And Saturn is about educating ourselves to answer better to what life throws at us, to reality as it is, not as we are afraid it might be or how we wish it to be, but as it is. So this is what this full moon is about. This is what this week is about. I want to thank you again for listening. And of course, for private lessons, for studying evolutionary astrology, for questions and private consultations, just any remark. I'd love to hear from you both on the phone or through my email and on the remarks to this video. And of course, sharing is a blessing and I appreciate it greatly. This is Boaz Feiler. Have a beautiful week. Live long and prosper. <laughs> and goodbye.